All right, so we got a palette of, uh, these look like server batteries. Let's take a look at these and see what's up with them. They look interesting. Let's put them in the bench. All right, so these seem to be Panasonic's uh, cells, right? Because it's a Panas uh, Panasonic label. Um, and they're, it's a 6.4 amp hour, so 323 watt hours. So it's not a huge battery pack, but um, it's a 50.4 volt, right? Um, so it's a 14S. Now, some of them have a rating. This one doesn't have a rating, but the other one had a rating of like 80, 84, like 4.2 um, kilowatt output, right? Um, which is about 81 amps. So it's got this connector over here. I wonder if it could do 80 amps. This one doesn't seem to have the rating, but the other ones do. And it's got this connector in here, which I, I guess, you know, it's probably for a server of some kind. It's got a handle in here that allows you probably to put it in and put it out. It's got this little thing that probably clicks, boom, and then it locks it there. So they look to be like some kind of hot swappable heart uh, server batteries, right? Let's take it apart. I already took the screws of this one so we can take it apart. Boom. All right. And here's the interesting thing about this battery. It's got this labyrinth um, structure here. So it's got a fan. So obviously there needs to be able to have airflow through this. And then it's also, uh, it seems to have a screen over here on this side. And so you should be able to get airflow in here, but I guess this is to arrest some kind a flame if this battery were ever to blow up, right? Or to do something, right? So these, I guess these get loaded quite a bit. And so I guess that's why you would have that, right? And then this is in a, gonna be in a server room. Um, and so because it's a server room, you don't want these, all your computers to just, <laughs> to just blow up together with this one, right? So it's gotta be pretty safe. This is UL listed. Um, it's got the listing in here and it's got things. So this is pretty safe. It's pretty built, pretty tough. Now let me take a look at the battery pack and those other stuff. I've taken one of these apart already so that we don't have to do it, uh, again. Okay. So here's the one that I already took apart. It's got pretty beefy cables on the inside. I mean, these are like six gauge, uh, silicon wire plus they have this other external uh sheeting in here that is probably for temperature right uh, the connector also has these big wires in here and then here's the assembly with the uh well this is a network connection right so this is a port so that it can connect to a network and then that's how you use them now, the, fortunately, this is probably proprietary, and so I don't know how to use it. Here's the BMS system, right? And if you look in here, it's got uh, these interconnects in here. It's got a 100 amp fuse, right? And then it's got eight of these MOSFETs. I guess it's supposed to be able to carry about 100 amps. Continuous, right? Um, then this is another logic board. And then it's got a big old, you know, bus bar there, right? The rest of the stuff is just a bunch of uh, screws and fasteners so that you can put it together. Now let's look at the battery. The battery itself is here. And here we go. Um, when you take the cover, so it's got two covers, look. It's got the BMS board on here, and then it's it's got covers, and then a cover. When you take the covers, then you're exposed to the cell terminals, right? And these seem to be pretty beefy. Enough to carry a, a I mean, they're, it's beefy, but not, I don't know, 100 amps? Uh, and then look at the structure here. So 
they're going through only two of those little things and it's all every cell has got four of those welds so the configuration is four cells in parallel and then 14 in series so this is a legit uh 48 volt battery so it could be used for any 48 volt um application in the and the e-bike world they call that 52 volts right but for the rest of us uh energy storage and stuff like that these are legit 48 volts it will work with any 48 volt inverter for uh, if, you know off-grid use and stuff like that um what's something else interesting oh yeah so this board right here so here's the interesting thing um because this is proprietary we won't be able to use this board that is for the bms but if you take it apart i took the screws off check it out so you have access to every single one of the um well the cell the cell terminals right and so if you want it we could design a board to put our own uh third party you know off the shelf bms and you just we just have to you know uh measure this we've done this in another battery um and then you just replace that in here and even if it's just a what we did it was just a breakout board a simple breakout board so it's a board that we put in here and then uh all these would end up in a connector out here that you can put a cable then you can put a bms and then connect you can you know uh attach many of these batteries you know uh together and parallel and so that's what you would need a simple breakout board um so that's the cool thing about these. You can do that, or you could just literally just make uh, cables with, um, you know, ring terminals, and then you can screw that in here and make that, you would put the, uh, the BMS somewhere in here. You could, you know, maybe, yeah, you could, you could attach it to this side over here, and then you can use this battery, put it back in that box, and then you could build a power wall. You can build some, um, you know, a backup system for your computers or something like that, right? Um, anyways, these are pretty cool cells. I don't know what cells they are because there is no way to look at them. They're pink. They're Panasonic pink. If you know of any other Panasonic pinks that can do about 20 amps each, do let us know. Post it in the comments in there. I don't want to destroy this. This is a beautiful battery and there's nothing wrong with it. Um, so yeah this is pretty cool we have a pallet of these so they're we're gonna price them you know uh in a way so that they could just move right we we are in business selling batteries we don't want to store them and so the faster we can get them out the door so that's why i i uh, sell them cheap right because that way i can buy more batteries we can get more in here and then you know so so this is completely for like a diy project because you won't be able to use them i don't know maybe someone there's a reason why these ended up here i don't know sometimes it's because their their usable cycle life is done right so for example like if they're used in a hospital um you know i think hospitals change their equipment whether it needs to, to be or not every two years or something like that so if these were used for backing up files in a server room in a hospital, for example, then that would end up, that would be the reason, right? So there might be most of these or all of these, I don't know, a number of these might be 100% in working order, right? And the only reason why they ended up in our hands uh, or in recyclers' hands and then in my hands would be because of that. But there also could be some that have some issues, right? I did see on a couple of them that it says like, you know, rework or something it said like look at that or something like it had some kind of an issue and they wrote some phrase in there that would let you know but for the most part these don't have any writing in there and so we don't know why they ended up being uh sent to us so these are um it's a small load again like with these small loads i don't want to spend too much time on them and so i don't check them i don't test them uh i usually don't design a thing for them which is kind of let you guys the diy uh crowd within my audience to kind of take you know take advantage of something like this and then make build your own stuff with them right um when we get the bigger loads then we do more in depth and we you know we'll make a board we'll make like a connector we'll figure it out we'll figure way more out so that it's uh 
a much better that complete product kind of plug and play close to plug and play there's always going to be some diy with our batteries uh and with our products and stuff right but uh but we get closer to like plug and play with the larger loads right this seems to be just a little load you know just a you know a, a pallet and so there we go panasonic server ul listed uh can do about 100 uh 80 81 i think i think 81 that's the rating on this on the other ones this one's particular don't have a rating so the ones that are panasonic and i think because the other ones are lg cells but the one but you're gonna get these ones uh we'll separate them so that uh you'll get well i guess i won't say that i no guarantees that you're getting panasonic cells in them because without us opening every single one right uh, we can't guarantee anything because there could be different cells in there. You know, they could be not 18650s, but 2170s. They're, sometimes these packs look exactly the same on the outside and then on the inside, uh, they're completely different. That's what we're seeing with all the e-bike packs, right? On the outside, they look identical, but on the inside, they have completely different cells. Some have pouches, some have cylindricals, cylindricals of different sizes and that sort of stuff. All right. All right, so if you're working on a 48 volt uh, power wall backup battery system or an e-bike or something that requires like four kilowatt, <laughs> that is very light and requires four kilowatt, this is probably the, the perfect pack for you, right? So there you go. They're gonna be at jack35.com. Thank you for watching this video. We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.